guys, welcome to station 3. This is my least favorite station and I will tell you everything about it, all my mistakes and everything so that you don't make the same mistakes on your station 3. Um, again, I am Khan. I am a fourth year optometry student and this is going to be my NBO part 3 um, experience and how I did it. Um, same disclaimer as before from station 1 if you want to watch that, I'll leave it right there. Um, and I'll leave Andreas' script on the description below. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So for station three, it's really, really important that you look at the rubric. Um, this one has so many random little details and some parts that you're supposed to educate for um, and all those things. So just make sure you go and look at that. The station itself, um, you don't have to set up anything in particular. Everything is just there for you, just like the ruler and the retinoscopy that you can either bring your own or use theirs, doesn't really matter. I use theirs. For station three, you're going to be writing the patient. So when you're doing that, I think writing is one of my poorer skills. So I think that's what made me really nervous for this station. When you're practicing writing, um, try to find someone with really small pupils, or if you're in clinic and you see someone with small pupils, practice with that because your patient can have pinpoint of pupils. So just make sure that you practice on every single patient. Obviously, if you have really wide pupils patients, it's gonna be really easy for you to read. But most of your patients aren't gonna be like that. And trust your gut with red. Sometimes when we add more so, add more minus, we get a little nervous and we're like, oh wait, ugh, like should I add this much to it? Like are they this myopic or are they they have this high of astigmatism? But just trust your gut see what you see and put in what you see. Most patients' eyes in the general population are symmetrical. So let's say one of the eyes just looked really weird to you, but you're really confident about the other eye. Um, I'm not saying this is gonna be 100% true, but most patients' eyes are symmetrical. So if you're more confident about one, you can just have the other one similar to that. So station three, my, my poor scoring station. Um, so my next one would be, don't freak out if your breath isn't right. It's Cause that's what I did. So when I read it my patient, I think I got them down to 2050 in one eye and 2020 on the other eye. And then in the moment I was like, oh no, this has never happened. And I got really nervous because I was like, I was aiming for that 2030 mark so I can just continue. So if that happens to you, it's okay. It's really not a big deal. Um, just give them more minus, give them more plus, take up so, add more so, just so you can get them a little bit down to like 2030 and then you can continue. Um, so just try to keep moving forward and try not to let it get to you when you continue because I know the feeling of kind of like mentally freaking out a little bit when it's not the perfect breath because I eventually moved forward and I got them down 2015 and I got perfect scores for that. So even though one of my eyes is just 2050. So yeah, so the VA after breath really doesn't matter. Just make sure you keep going. For me, I had perfect score on running and manifest refraction for that part. So make sure the VA really doesn't matter. So just make sure you have your techniques correct. One of the biggest thing is techniques, the, the way you do things um, is more important than the answers you get. So when you're doing ferrometry, for example, so the way you do it, your hand motion, your speed, all those things, those are really important. So for this station, make sure you know what the norms are because the patient can give you different ranges that isn't normal. Or when you're doing NRA and PRA, the answer could have been off as well. So just make sure you understand the values. Then when you do the patient education, you can thoroughly explain why they're having difficulty accommodating or why they might need readers or they're perfectly normal. Your eyes are working perfectly fine together. So whatever it is, um, just make sure you understand the values. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm now going to be getting a rough estimate of your prescription. So I'm just gonna have you look right there at that big letter E. Um, there will be sometimes I may cover the E, but let me know if I covered the E completely. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights off. So ideally it would be dark in here and then you would state your working distance. My working distance is 50 centimeters. <laughs> Now I'm going to take out my working distance. Right, you can go ahead and come forward. 
So after retinoscopy and taking out my working distance of two doctors, my retinoscopy finding is going to be minus 0 0.50 sphere, minus 0 0.25, so with an axis of 180. On my left eye, I have a plus 0 0.25 sphere, a sill of minus 0 0.75 with an axis of 180. Mrs. Lee, what's the lowest line you can see? T Z V E C L. Good. And then right here, what's the lowest line you can see? T Z V E C L. And then right here, what's the lowest line? Um, O F L C P. Good. And then right here, what is the lowest line you can see? T Z V E C L. And then what about here? Um, A P E O T F. Good. All right, now I'm gonna move the line to a 2030 line. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm now going to be performing JCC. I'm gonna give you two options, one or two. You let me know which one looks clearer. And if they look the same, you can just let me know that as well. Mm -hmm. So one right here or two? Two. One or two? Two. One or two? Uh, same. Okay. One or two. Same. Then back to power. One or two. Same. Okay. And then I'm going to change the line to a 2020 line. All right, Mrs. Lee, that line should be completely blurry to you. Yes. That correct. I'm going to slowly move the lens. You let me know when you can just make out one or two letters, but nothing more. I see an H. Good. Where is the H? At the end. Good. All right, Mrs. Lee, can you read that entire line for me? Yes, it's T-E-G-A-D-H. All right, that's going to be a 2020. All right, Mrs. Lee, do you see the line right there? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to give you two options. Which one looks sharper and clearer to you? One right here or two? One. One or two? One. One or two. Same. Good. And then one right here or two. Two. One or two. Same. Good. All right, I'm going to change the line to a 20 to the line. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slowly remove the lens and you let me know when you can just make out one or two letters. Mm -hmm. Okay, where is the R? Second to last. Perfect. And then, can you read that entire line for me? Z, P, N, D, R, G. Okay. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm just gonna now make sure that your eyes are balanced. So now I'm gonna put up the 2040 chart. And now you should see two chart, one on the top and one on the bottom. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so which one looks sharper, darker, or clearer? Or do they look about the same? Uh, the bottom one. The bottom one. And what about now? They're the same. Perfect. All right, I'm going to change the line back to 2020. We're going to do the exact, exact same thing we did earlier. I'm going to slowly remove these lenses. And you let me know when you can just see one or two, but nothing more. Um, I see an L. Okay, where's the L? The second letter. Good. And then can you read that line for me? R L C P K P K T. <laughs> okay, can you read that with one eye? Yep. R L C P K T. Good. And then this eye, can you read it backwards for me? Yep. T K P C L R. All right, so my final subjective refraction is with a monocular VA of 2020, and the left eye is and with a vision of 2020 monocularly as well, 
and then binocularly it's 2020. All right, Mrs. Lee, that just means that you are um, farsighted in one eye and perfectly plain on the other eye with a little bit of astigmatism. Um, the farsighted just means that your ability to look up the distance is very good, but when you're looking up close, it's kind of hard, but that's totally fine because we'll give you some glasses or contacts to correct that. You have a little bit of astigmatism, which means instead of your eye being a perfect sphere with one power across the entire meridian, um, you require two powers on separate meridians, which is perfectly fine because uh, we'll just give you some glasses or contacts and that should correct that up for you, okay? Awesome. All right, so now I'm going to see how well your eyes work together as a team and how they're aligned. I'm going to come forward one more time. Is that comfortable right there for you? Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the chart back to the 2040. And I'm just going to include one of your eyes. All right, Mrs. Lee, when I unoclude you, you should see two chart, one on the top right and one on the bottom left, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so our goal here is to make them line up right on top of each other like buttons on a shirt. I'm gonna slowly move the one on the bottom and you just let me know where it is compared to the top, whether it's to the left, to the right, or directly under. Okay. Left, 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 left left right under okay patient is going to be for prison diopter eso you're an eso mm -hmm. oh i didn't know that <laughs> oh wait i did cover tests so i should know that <laughs> now you know that <laughs> so all right so now for i'm gonna go 12 the opposite direction all right, you should see two charts again, one on the top right, one on the bottom left, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna be moving the one on the right to measure your vertical deviation. Let me know when they line up right next to each other like headlights on a car. Mm, there. Okay, and she has a one prism diopter hypophoria. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm now going to be seeing how well your eyes work together as a team. Do you see that line right there? Yes. Okay, you let me know when it becomes blurry, break into two, and then back as one. And if you don't see it become blurry first, that's totally fine as well. Okay. Two. Okay, let me know when it comes back as one. One. Good. All right, so basin ranges are um, 12 and 8. Mrs. Lee, that means that you have enough ranges to compensate for your ESO. All right, Mrs. Lee, now I'm going to do base out ranges. You let me know when it becomes blurry, break into two, and then back as one. Still clear? Mm hmm Two. Okay, let me know when it comes back as one. And one. Okay. Base out ranges are 19 times two, which is going to be 36. 38. 38. <laughs> Can't do math. All right, so base out ranges are going to be 38 and then back as one at 26. All right, so now I'm going to be measuring your vertical ranges. So you let me know when it breaks into two and then back as one. Mm -hmm. Two. And then back as one. One. Good. Patient supervergence ranges are four and two, which is within normal limits of the right eye. So now I'm going to do the infravergence ranges. Let me know when it breaks into two. Two. And then back as one. One. Okay, and supervergence ranges are three and two, which is also within lim normal limits. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and have you come forward. And I'm gonna check to see how well you can focus up close. Okay, I'm gonna put the light not directly onto the sheet of paper. 
but just slightly like this. Okay, I'm gonna put in the ox lens and a plus one. All right, Mrs. Lee, you should see lines going up and down and then left and right, is that correct? Yes. All right, which one's sharper right now? The vertical. And now? Um, still the vertical. And now? No, they're kind of the same. Okay, so that's gonna be a lag of accommodation of 0 0.50, which is within normal limits. Mrs. Lee, your ability to focus up close is very good. Then we're gonna take out the aux lens and then I'm gonna go back to my original base. All right, Mrs. Lee, and I'm now going to be checking to see how well your eyes are focusing up close again. Mm -hmm. And then I will be starting from the base of your distance prescription. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and look at that last line right there. Mm -hmm. um, can you read it to me? T-P-E-O-L-F-D-Z. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm gonna change these lenses. You let me know when it's so blurry that you can't make it out anymore, okay? Mm -hmm. That's going to be an NRA of plus 2.5. Right, Mrs. Lee, we're going to do this one more time, okay? Mm -hmm. Now it's blurry. Okay, and you can sit back. And that's going to be a PRA of minus 2.5, which means they're balanced, which is within normal limits. And that would be the end to this station. All right, Mrs. Lee, do you see that line right there? Is it clear? No. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, do I lie? <laughs> <laughs>